Hello everyone and welcome back to a Gran Turismo time trial video. And you can see I'm in an Audi R8 LMS Evo, but don't worry, you do not have to use that car. Let me explain. We're at Spa, first of all, you can pick any Group 3 car you like. In fact, you'll see two in this video. Racing hard tires. I say this is an easy goal, to be honest with you. You just have to be careful of those bollards and a gold estimate of around 2 minutes 20.5 in terms of where the gold time may end up. Because I see still some time in my lap as well. If you do enjoy this video, as always, do give it a like and do subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. But what we're going to do now is stop at the Kemmel Straight and start the lap again, but give you a guide to boot here then. So we're going to head towards turn one. And as we go into here, we're looking on the left-hand side there for that hundred board okay i'm actually breaking just after this now depending on your car will depend on exactly where you break and that's the same for all these brake markers that i'm going to point out okay and i'll talk about that in the pad lap where i use a different car as well but just after the hundred board is when i'm going to go on the brakes here and then i start to release brakes as i go towards the corner i let the car hit the bounce on the apex i straighten up and then i accelerate out be careful on throttle with a lot of cars because if you still turn in you're going to get some power oversteer and of course power oversteer can be quite deadly and you end up in a barrier our route's ready on then, so we cut on the left, and we go towards the right, it's all flat out, just make sure you don't cut it too much, and then breathe as you're on the Kemmel straight. Again, just be careful power over steer on this one, racing hard tyres are slippy, and a lot of the Group 3 cars do like to spin up their rear wheels, especially the front-engined rear-wheel drive ones. We head towards the comb then, and on the left-hand side there is the kerb, to start the kerb, actually, to be precise. That is my brake marker nearly in every single car at this circuit. It's very rare for me not to use this as a brake marker. You can see that from the chase cam then, a very obvious brake marker there as we go into this corner then. Now you need to avoid the bollards. Take a wider line than you normally would here. As you go towards the left, don't go on the inside in the Audi R8. I found it would literally oversteer there. I short shift the third gear through this last part of Lake Home there. Again, avoiding the barriers and it keeps the car a little bit settled, that third gear. As we head towards this right-hander then, we're going to break again using the start of a curb here, but this time just before it, okay? Because we're going downhill, the braking distance is that little bit longer, so we need to make sure we do stop the car. If you brake too late here, you're going to go quite deep. Sometimes you can bring it back, but most of the time you can't. Now, I've highlighted the third bollard here. The only reason I've highlighted it is it's an accelerating marker, okay? So you count one, two, you see the third one, and you go, right, okay, I need to start accelerating. And those who are keen-eyed on the bumper cam will have seen I've just started accelerating. Now, of course, on the replay, in terms of chase cam there, it's a little bit delayed, so do keep that in mind if you do watch any replays. We accelerate out of there, do be careful power oversteer, but then as we head over towards this right-hand side, you can see the gaps in the barrier there. Now, I've started to break already, I'm aiming for that, and I need to start turning at that point, okay? It's a turn-in marker, essentially. Now, you do have to be careful here. There are two bollards on the inside, and we normally like to cut these a lot, but this time I'm trying to avoid them. And do be careful on the exit. That dark green stuff is extremely slippy. Here's that gantry there. It's a bit of a time reference point for those wondering, because I do mark my laps where I go, just to see where I'm losing time, especially in this middle sector, which is rather large. If you pull on there on the left-hand side, you've got the catch fence, all the marshals there that you can use, all the dark grey to light grey as well on the Armco, actually. Three brake markers there, all in one go. Very easy brake marker to do here. You're going to brake and turn in. Try turning in a bit later than normal and don't try and outbrake yourself. If you outbrake yourself at Puan, it ruins your lap. Whereas if you just brake a bit earlier and roll a little bit, you won't ruin your lap as much. Really key tip, that one. As we head towards the chicane here then, or long chicane, should I say. So you can use the gantry or the start of the curb. I'm actually breaking in between these. So as the gantry disappears off my screen is when I'm braking, but it's before the start of the curb. So it's in the middle of those. As I come into here, I turn in towards the curb and I'm just releasing the brakes as I go. I want to accelerate quite early here and stay to the right. I short shift as I go to the left, let the car roll. And when I know I can make the exit, I then fully hit the accelerator and go through the corner. As we get to this right-hander, this annoyed me during the time trial. I made a few mistakes here constantly. So you can use the start of the curb. You can use the big white thing on the right or the van there on the right side. Much more obvious to see on chase cam, which you can see right here. It's a really good brake mark on chase cam, that one. But as you come into here, again, you've got to be careful of those bollards. I kept running a little bit too wide here sometimes. As you accelerate through here, you really want a good run out of this corner because you want to maximize your speed. As you turn into here, you've got the start of the curb on the right hand side. Okay, really good turning marker for this corner. And you can see that from chase cam there. So it's just before you get to it on chase cam. As you turn in, you want to clip the curb on the inside, but avoid the bollard. Really, really annoying to do, but it will just rotate you around and continue on through. A slight lift is beneficial there rather than trying to do it flat. Some cars can't even do it flat. This Audi is a little bit off but you need to make sure you clip the curb and then it's less off throttle and more slidey. 
Through Bunchy Mom we go then. Absolutely flat out. Not a problem here in Gran Turismo 7 as we head towards the final chicane then. So you've got the 150 board on the left, which you can use. It will just be after that. But I'm actually using that billboard on the right side. I'm breaking halfway into it. So as it leaves my screen, half as it's left half my screen, should I say, or as it's halfway off my screen, better words, uh, that is when I'm hitting the brakes hard here. Breaking a straight line and then turning a bit later here. If you turn in too early, you're going to really over tighten the chicane. You really don't want to. Be careful on exit, of course. In this Audi R8, you do have to be very careful on exit, otherwise you will spin the wheels. We head towards the line, and that's a 17-0. It's very much 16s are possible there. Do keep that in mind. Now, you've probably gone, Tidge, that's an engine change. Yes, indeed. We're now in the Porsche 911, chasing my ghost here, and we're doing the pad lap, which I always do now, just to prove it's possible on the pad. Very much possible here. As you can see, I've already done a 219, sorry. I'm basically on my second lap because I invalidated the next one. Let's see what we can do here. The Rouge Radion is flat then in the pad lap. Of course it is. The first corner was a bit iffy. So you just got to get the acceleration right. I only use the pad once a week and very briefly, which is why I'm not as sensitive or I can't control the car as well as I do on a wheel. We head towards the comb then. Remember the start of the curb on the left hand side is the brake marker. Drop into third gear. Trying to take a wider line here to avoid those bollards. We got very close indeed and try not to go over the curb on the left hand side. Bit of oversteer there. Short shift to third. Through we go as we continue on through here then. So the Porsche 911 is still a strong car of course as we get in towards this braking zone. Start the curb again. But it's a different car and I wanted to show here that you can use any car you like. Arguably, just pick your favorite GT3 car, Group 3 car, and have a blast here as we go into the left-hander. Again, letting the car roll there because I don't want to accelerate. Of course, oversteer. I'm keeping the car settled as we head towards Puon. Left and side, catch fence, all the marshals there. Hard on the brakes, turning a bit later than normal. Let the car roll a little bit. When you know you can make it, hit that throttle hard as we continue on through. A short shift to fourth can be beneficial there, by the way. You want to avoid the understeer. If a short shift is available to you there and you're thinking, I'm going to go off rather than lift, Hit your upper gear or gear shift and you should be fine. Through the left we go. I didn't mean to go to second gear then. That was my mistake in this Porsche 911. Again, it's a quick lap just to show you it's possible on a pad as we go into the right-hander. Doing the same thing again. Just being careful on the exit here. We turn in then. Are we going to lift? Tiniest lift there. Clip the curb. Bit easier to do that right-hander in the Porsche 911. Arguably, you could probably do it flat. But in the Audi R8, the front lifts up a bit too much. As I say, you do need to clip the curb on the inside and have a teeny tiny lift. We head towards Blanchimana, which on the pad is just as flat out as it is on a wheel as we go into here. Then nice and easy. Happy days indeed. And we're going to head towards the final chicane. Once again, the billboard on the right hand side. Halfway into it. There we go. Hard on the brakes. Slowing the car down nicely as we come into here. Abusing that on the inside. Now, I will say braking earlier for the chicane is beneficial. I messed up quite a few laps because I kept out braking myself. I just brought it back a little bit and it helped massively. We are going to go into our chase cam lap now and we're back on board the Audi R8. And you can see there my ABS is on weak for those that are wondering with that setting. ABS is on weak. I have done a video on it. I do talk about it a lot and I will link that at the end of the video as well. We're going to continue towards Eau Rouge and rally on then. And here we go. So over towards the left hand side. Make sure you stay on the curbs. Through the right we go. Don't click the curb on the right too much here. Just make sure you stay on them as you crest the hill there and you will be fine in terms of track limits. You can breathe again on the camel straight. It's a nice part of this one. You can just breathe and relax. There's a lot of time to be gained in sector one as long as you nail turn one. As we're going to Lake Home here, then start the curve there. Hard on the brakes and turn in. Avoid the bollards on the right. You can see that I'm staying on the yellow and red curbing. Over towards the left we go. Short shift to third gear. Over we go. Clip the curb on the inside. Accelerate through. You may go wider than this. Just lift off a little bit to come back on the circuit. Just before the start of the curb here, brake. Slow the car down. Release the brakes. Turn. Let the car roll. Third ball on the right. Start accelerating. Over towards the left, then over towards the right. And we drop to second gear here. Clip the curb and off we go. Being careful of the dark green stuff on the exit. We're going to head towards Puan then. Left hand side. Catch fence. All the marshals is what we're looking for here. Hard on the brakes. Turning a bit later than expected here. I was aiming for 105 mile an hour to start accelerating. I was a bit lower on this particular lap. But there's still time to be gained on this lap. There really is. Head towards the right-hander then, uh, between the gantry and the curb there is where we break. On chase cam, it is actually the gantry there. Through the right we go, a wider line in towards the left. We short shift to third gear, keeps the balance of the car, and we can accelerate through very nicely indeed. And then we can use the van on the right -hand side if you want to. Second gear through here. Be careful of the exit, don't run too wide too early. And as that curb starts on the right-hand side, turn in, clip the curb here, and accelerate through. Try and maximize the revs in this Audi R8. It's a naturally aspirated V10 engine. It likes to be revved here as we head towards Blanchimont then. You breathe a little bit, of course, because Blanchimont is flat in this GT3 Group 3 car as we go through the left-hander, and in many of them, in fact, here. It's only the old cars where you're like, where you'll have to lift a little bit. 
the hold on the brakes, using the billboard on the right. Start the billboard, in fact, on Chase Cam. In we go. So I cut a lot of the right here, trying to keep the car settled. And as I go towards the left hander, look at this. I'm so careful on the throttle there to avoid power oversteer. I didn't want to ruin the lap, and that's a 217.0. I really wanted a 2.16. I put in a few more laps than normal to try and get the 2.16 because I was on for it so many times, and I just didn't quite get it there. Key to this one, of course, is just a practice, practice, practice. Keep the car stable and be careful of power O steer and those bollards right there in your vision. If you have enjoyed this video, as always, do give it a like and do subscribe to the channel. Stay in touch with all the latest content. We are very close to 50,000 subscribers now, and I really do appreciate your support. Do check out GT Amiga and use code Tijani at checkout for a discount, and I get a kickback. All the Fanatec link in the description also gives a kickback to the channel. Last week's time trial guide is there, as well as the ABS video that I did talk about. A big thank you for watching, as always, and I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.